Hello everyone. Welcome back to the session. This is Chef Santosh Malkoti from Chitkara School of Hospitality. And this video is in con continuation uh, of the last session which was dedicated on uh, ladder equipments and layout. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about ladder control. At the completion of the session, one should be able to describe what is ladder control, identify the essentials of ladder control, enumerate the importance of ladder control, identify the factors need to be considered while devising a ladder control, and reason behind the liaison with other department. Control in every catering organization is crucial. In small restaurants and tea shops, in hospital kitchens, large hotels, in fact in every establishment, the role of managers and potential manager is to organize themselves, their time, other people and physical resources. An essential factor of good organization is effective control of oneself, of those responsible to you and of physical resources which often includes financial control. The amount and how it is administered will vary from establishment to establishment. However, successful control applies to all aspects of catering, from menu planning to food cost analysis. An effective ladder control will help the ladder chef to run the operations effectively, efficiently and economically. To operate the department effectively, efficiently and economically, it is essential that the chef garde manager should exercise strict control over the foodstuffs received and stored in the department. This involves some of the activities like checking the quality and quantity delivered to the larder, ensuring that all foodstuffs are stored at the right temperature, ensuring that portion control is rigidly carried out, ensuring that the food is never overstocked, taking all precautions to ensure there is no pilferage, taking the daily stock of food material stored in the larder section, making every step to maintain the highest possible standards of hygiene. Thus, the valuable points mentioned over here will help to run the department in the desired manner. It is important when examining an existing control system or preparing to install a system into a new operation that the following points should be borne in mind. First, any control should be comprehensive and cover all the outlets of an establishment and all stages of the food control cycle. Second, the cost of maintaining the system should be in relation to the saving to be made and thus it has to be justifiable. Third, the control system should be easy to operate and to be understood by all level of staff. Fourth, the control system should be seen by the staff working. It means that the management should act in a positive way to adverse trading results and follow up on future results to check if the corrective actions taken is effective or not. Fifth, to be an effective control system, it is essential that the information provided must be accurate and up to date. In the absence of above mentioned statements, the control system won't be considered as foolproof. An effective ladder control system generally have following elements. First, Implementation of SOPs. Second, usage of portion control tools. Third, daily stock taking. Fourth, inventory maintenance on regular basis. To develop a mechanism for ladder control may be an easy task for some of the sections, but may be daunting task for others. For example, the keeping of stock of food sent in and returned by the cold buffet can be a complicated and time wasting task if someone has to measure every gram or millimeter of the leftovers. Therefore, it is necessary to accept some rule of thumbs, providing this is well supervised. An experienced chef guard manager should be able to tell at a glance the weight or 
number of portions of a given joint or cold dish within very narrow margin. The butchery department also presents some problems and the stock sheet for the department needs careful consideration. On the other hand, raw ingredients and packed food items are comparatively easy to control. Each catering establishment will produce their own system. The larder is both a storage as well as preparation department for some of the perishable food items. The larder staff under the supervision of the chef Gardemanje is responsible for ordering, storing and preserving of stores, keeping stocks up to date and accounting for perishable items like meat, fish, poultry, games, etc. The bulk of such food stuff needs pre-preparation like cleaning, dressing, cutting into uh, pre-portion sizes and generally preparing for cooking. To understand this concept of liaison with other department, one should know some of the activities in which various department of kitchen and larder are involved. For example, pastry for pies or puddings and various savouries served from the larder department are best prepared by the pastry staff who will be more skillful in such work and who are equipped with the right apparatus and necessary tools for producing such items. Second example, a number of garnishes or accompaniments to dishes served from kitchen departments are prepared by the guard manger. Such items as stuffings, force meat, bacon rashers are naturally provided by the larder as well as cold sauces for the accompaniment of hot dishes. To function in an effective manner, the larder department must operate in harmony with the kitchen in particular if confusion and wastages are to be avoided. A good layout of the larder in relation to the kitchen will avoid undue running from place to place. Lack of liaison between the departments could result in duplication of work or sometimes in certain process not being carried out of the best advantage. By this we come to an end of the session. The next session will be on yield testing as it is one of the very important aspects in kitchen which will help you to understand how yield testing plays an important role in standardizing recipes and standardizing the cost. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.